Okay, so we want to go ahead and bake all of this together in Painter and bypass all of the compositing that you'd have to do in Photoshop. And the way you have to do that is through very precise naming conventions. Now, those naming conventions are going to be driven by our low poly mesh, which right now is going to be reptile, tongue, eyes, teeth, and claws. Now, the tongue, eyes, teeth, and claws are going to be fairly simple. Those are just going to have one high res to one low res. The reptile, however, is going to have a bunch of high res subtools associated with this. So basically, you're going to have reptile low as our game res, and then reptile high head, arms, horns, and legs. And how you're going to name this is how we have it named here. And you're going to notice it's capital because ZBrush tends to capitalize the first letter of your subtool. So I'm just going to keep that. Um, and this matters. So reptile low underscore low is going to be my low res for this. And then I'm going to go into ZBrush and name all of my subtools that I want to have baked onto that low res mesh as reptile underscore high underscore head, arms, horns, and legs. Now anything after the high doesn't really matter. It just disregards this. This is just more for me for organizational purposes, but that's the basics. So Here's our low res, and let's head into ZBrush here. And you're going to see, uh, when I went to save this file, it's called Reptile Mass Bag. It just said Save As Reptile Mass Bag. Unfortunately, when you do that, it renames your top subtool as Reptile Mass Bag. That's not what I want. I need to go ahead and do another rename and call it Reptile underscore high underscore legs in this case. Now you're going to see when I did that, it kind of did some funny things. Number one, it capitalized Reptile and R, which I told you about earlier. And number two, the underscores came in as dashes, and that's not going to work with our naming convention. So what I'm going to have to do is go back to rename, and we're going to try this again. We're going to type in reptile, and instead of doing underscore, I'm going to do alt shift underscore, and we're going to go high and alt shift underscore leg. There we go. So now we have reptile high legs, reptile high arms, chest, shoulders. So all this stuff that's going to go be baked on that high res here like his legs, his arms, his chest, his shoulders, his head, the inner and upper mouth, um, his tongue and eyes and claws are going to be separate, but everything, even these horns are going to be baked into that one low res mesh. So all of those are going to be reptile high underscore whatever. Uh, as we scroll down here, we're going to have eyes high, but there's that's it. There's no eyes high anything else just because we only have one high res for that low res all the way down. So it, the very last one is reptile high middle and that's basically if I go into solo mode here the middle of his body. So now that that's all been organized what we're going to need to do is export all of these as one FBX file. So you're going to want to take your Z plugin, grab this little circle over here and open up your FBX export import and I'm going to do it for all visible. Um, you're going to see FBX 2014 is what's chosen. When we get into Maya 2016 there is going to be a little bit of something you're going to have to do in relation to this. Um, you're going to Maya Y up is fine. We're going to get smooth and normal. Sure. If you go down here to options, if you go ahead and do export polygroups as mats, and every single one of these subtools has a polygroup. So if I hold down shift and turn my poly paint off and turn on polyframe, you're going to see every single one of these has a polygroup. That's going to come in useful later. In fact, let's go ahead and just hit control W on all of these. So you can go through and just hit control W and that'll go ahead and make a polygroup for every single one of your subtools. And when you export that out, what we're basically going to do, the idea is we're going to bake out our vertex color, which is going to be our poly paint, and then we're also going to bake out a material color for every single one of these sections. Now, you could alternatively go ahead and just do a color fill on all the body parts you want to be the same color. So you could choose like a red color in here, and then you could just fill his arms and his legs and his body skin and his head skin with red and bake that out as a vertex color. Alternatively, you could also do this, which is uh, choose export polygroups as mats and then go ahead and hit export. And we're going to go bake all. And I already have one in here, but I'm just going to call this creature high FBX and then hit save. And then we'll hop back into painter. And what painter is going to need now is a low res. And I have that in Maya. You could go ahead if you wanted to have your, if your low reses were in ZBrush, what you could do is just do the exact same exporting process. Just have your reptile low, your tongue low, your eyes low. And then when you go to export those into the FBX, as long as they're all visible, if you have visible check, then you probably want to go ahead and smooth your normals in this case because it's a creature and all the normals can be smooth and it'll bake fine. Um, then you would just go ahead and export that as your low. Uh, what I have is in Maya, and I'm going to go ahead and export all of these as low. Um, you can select all of them. If they're in a group, go ahead and just take it out of that group, select them all, hit Shift P, and then just go ahead and grab them. Go to File, Export Selection, go into the Option box, choose FBX, and I had to go into Edit Preset and change it from FBX 2016 to 2014-2015 to play nice with uh, Substance Painter 2.0.4, which is what I'm using now. 
and then just go ahead and file export selection and save it as creature low. Okay, so now when you're in Painter, you're going to go to File, New. Go ahead and go ahead and select your mesh. That's going to be the creature low. You can beg a DirectX or OpenGL doesn't really matter. The document resolution is going to be your working resolution. That has nothing to do with your texture size. We're going to choose that in a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and add. Oh, we don't have any texture to add because we haven't baked them yet. So hit OK. And that's going to load our guy up in here. You're going to go to Bake Textures. And the first thing you want to do is go down here to match and instead of always do by mesh name and that's going to take your mesh name and do the highs and the lows. Incidentally, if you want to see that, let's go ahead and do a file new and let's go file import so we can just see what's in that file. So here's the creature low. If we go to outliner, you're going to see it just has all these different mesh files all named appropriately. So back in painter, we have uh, match by mesh name and if you go down here to material ID, the first time we're going to bake this is going to be our vertex color. So this is going to bake in the material ID, it's going to bake our poly paint which is just like the nicely painted guide with the scales and stuff. Uh, and that's fine for now. If you go back here to common, you can choose what resolution you actually want your source textures to be at. In this case, let's do 2048. We need to choose our high poly, creature high and then we're good to go so we can go ahead and hit bake. All right, once that's done everything's going to be plugged in correctly, everything's baked correctly and the only caveat is our material ID like I said is our base just our base color map. So what I'm going to do is go here to textures and I'm going to do a search for ID. Maybe not. Let's do a search for I and there's a, there's our color map. So I'm going to take this color map, right click and do export resource and just into this folder I'm going to go ahead and select this folder and that's going to go ahead and export this. Right now it's called color map, uh, color map from mesh UVs 02. I'm going to go ahead and rename this as base poly paint and then what I'm going to do is go back in here to bake textures. I'm going to uncheck everything except for that ID map and then I'm going to change it from vertex color to material color and that's going to go through and when, remember when we exported out of ZBrush it assigned uh, all the poly groups as materials. So now when we go in here and we assign, uh, we're baking our materials to the material ID parameter, let's go ahead and bake that and you're going to see it updated our color map to a material ID kind of uh, clown texture here. So if we go ahead and drop that say into our fill layer here under the base color you can see Oh, those are the material IDs. Of course, we have to tile it one. And now you can see you can select every single one of those areas as a mask. Now to go ahead and get that other one we have in here, it's the base poly paint. I'm just going to drag it right into here and I'm going to do, you can choose to import it into your current session or into the project. So if you want it to be associated with this project all the time, go ahead and do into project. And then you have this one and now we can just swap that base color out. And now we have our poly paint base color along with our uh, material ID. So if I want to add a mask with color selection and go ahead and pick a color, only assign this to where it's peach. There you go.